I would like to show you one of the cases, one of the impressive uh, ventricular tachycardia ablation cases that we've done here in the heart center of, uh, of Cologne, together with Ariane Sultan, who is one of the intending physicians here in our lab. So the um, main topic is high density mapping in ischemic cardiomyopathy, and the case that I um, would like you to, uh, to acquaint you with has been performed here um, last uh, week and we were facing a 70-year-old male patient with post CRT implantation. The patient presented with a monomorphic VT with a cycle length of 540 milliseconds. Yet, um, as we already stressed, an ischemic cardiomyopathy. And um, if you'd like to look at the um, images here, we see a 12-lead ECG of the um, VT with this cycle length, a positive deflection here in, uh, in lead one with a late transition and um, with rather slow hemodynamically stable, so we were able to map this tachycardia in ventricular tachycardia as well. And he underwent mitral valve reconstruction prior to um, this case. So one of the maps that we show is a late potential map as indicated here. In purple, you see the very late areas that are delineated on a light potential map, which is completely in line with the dense car area that you see on the right panel, which indicates the low voltage areas, especially with the dense car with the lower margin of um, 0 0.5 millivolts and even lower because the atrial catheter is able to pick up some really nice and uh, late low voltage potentials that are delineated here. And with this bipo all bipolar configuration, we are even in sinus rhythm able to uh, see these slow conduction areas that may um, uh, facilitate the slow conduction for the ventricular tachycardia. You see the slowing of the local electrogram here with a signal width of almost uh, 200 milliseconds, which is supposedly one of the mechanisms that we can, that we can see here for this ventricular tachycardia and some other sites also depicted here with the atrial grid catheter, also late potentials. As you can see here, the QRS complex is already, um, is already uh, lined up here with a late ventricular activation in the HD mapping um, catheter. And when we map the tachycardia, um, since the patient was hemo hemodynamically sufficiently stable, we were able to also have a propagation map of this tachycardia with one of the pacing sites being also in this slow conduction, low amplitude area. And uh, when we paced here via one of the bipoles of the atrial grid catheter, we are able to have an overlap with a clinical VT of 98%, which is, which is delineated here also with a very long stim to cures interval in this area where this slow conduction uh, signals were obtained. When we were acquainting those slow uh, conduction areas, we were pretty much able to see the lava, the late potentials, which are displayed here. So the latest um, activation is displayed in this areas where the spread or the outspread of the ventricular tachycardia and the exit to the ventricular myocardium may occur. So what we do for therapy, the ablation was performed with a tacticard catheter with a D-curve um, with a setting of the generator starting with 30 watts. And when we see a nice impedance drop and we don't, um, and it, um, we don't notice any steam pops, we go up, we ramp the, the energy up to uh, 55 watts. Did the automate, uh, automark metrics using LSI. A total of 42 ablation was were necessary. This is not only for terminating this tachycardia, but also to address the surrounding myocardium, since we know that ablating the clinical tachycardia is probably not the only endpoint that we want to have. And since we delineated the substrate very nicely, we are able to go even a little bit further and also ablate potential other slow conduction areas which didn't maintain this, but potentially other VTs down the road. And at the end, we would like to see non-inducibility of any VT with up to three extra stimuli, which we did for this ventricular tachycardia. We pace at two different cycle lengths with a base strain of 510 and 450 milliseconds, and we're not able to induce any further VT in this patient who are easily inducible for his clinical VT at the very beginning. So the results of the outcome were an acute successful ablation of the clinical VT morphology. And not only that, also a non-inducibility. The patient was completely stable during uh, analgo sedation uh, with, with using propofol and midazolam. And we see with this catheter an advanced substrate analysis capabilities 
as we've indicated with the slow conduction areas, with the dense scar that we were seeing with the entrainment mapping, the long stim decrease intervals, and also an automated late abnormal ventricular electrogram mapping, as we were able to see um, on, these, on these images. There's fast mapping with a very convincing signal uh, quality and the Tacticath fourth catheter is also very accurate to maintain our uh, lesions and to give us the stability that we need in this um, patient's substrate. That was the case from the Cologne uh, Heart Center University. We would like to thank you for your attention and uh, hope to see us back soon for some of the other cases in this series. Thank you. Mm -hmm.